You ready for this? The box barn, which has been heretofore powered only by extension cords and power strips. It's now got one of these. Yes, I completed the install on the wiring. It's kind of like a blended system uh, on the boxes. I've got all kinds of surface mount and stuff going on. And not just receptacles, but surface mount switches. And same deal with this one over here. They power the lights inside the container, so you just walk through this door. And there is illumination of the junk. Right behind the switch, I just put a switch outlet. So this guy is powered by that switch in there. Somebody's got to do a little tidy up in the container. And then up top, same thing. A ton of switch outlets. I had a bunch of these freebie UFO lights. I've got kind of mixed feelings about them. They are super bright. On the plus side, that's nice to have a lot of light. On the downside, it almost kind of blows out the space, like super bright. And they're not all the same. You can see like over there, it's kind of like some different ones. That guy over there has like a big diffuser on it. But they were freebie samples. I was kind of stashing and storing away. The cool thing about the surface mount, you know, plugging these into boxes, is just that if I don't end up liking them, want to switch out to something else, I can always do that. Just unplug them and they can go bye-bye. Garage door is also in the works and should be any day now. Any day now, I think I've said that before. And I should show you the box. This is box two, the big one. I wired this up. All right, Junior and Josh are here doing the garage door. If you've been following this box barn build from the start, you might have picked up on the idea that I kind of had a different plan originally for this door. Originally, like I'd sort of dreamed up this idea that I was gonna weld up a bifold door that kind of folded in the middle. And as it went up on like a big winch, created an awning, kind of like a funky setup that would be all industrial and crazy and 10,000 pounds. And it just didn't really kind of come to fruition. You know, it's one of those plans you sort of it's in the back of your mind and you're saying to yourself, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna cook it up. And ultimately, I just kinda of decided, no, I'm not doing it. Like, it just didn't seem to make sense anymore. So, I searched around for a local garage door company to spec out a door. I had built the opening a little bit funkified. Like, it wasn't 12 by 10, it was like 12 foot three and a half by 10. Cause I was gonna do this thing with angle iron and so on, so. So anyway, it was kind of a weird size opening. And I searched around for a local company and it seems like they didn't really exist anymore. Like all the local outfits were kind of subsidiaries of these bigger companies out of Texas or whatever. And you probably know what I'm talking about. Like more and more stuff just kind of goes that way. The local hardware store is kind of local, but it's also part of like a bigger chain of stores and networks and conglomerates and whatnot. But nonetheless, a dude came out, kind of measured everything. We talked about the dimensions being a little bit weird. Took like maybe a month for it to come in. And then these two guys showed up. I have installed two garage doors in my day. I've repaired a couple and it's never gone super great. It's always just been a little bit sketchy, springs flying, wires whipping, you know, hard to get the thing just totally locked in tight. This door system ended up being a little bit different than the ones I've done before. Like it creeps up the wall to the ceiling and the door hangs on the ceiling. It's also insulated. I didn't want any windows on it. Bluetooth this, remote control that. So it's part of like the satellite controlled AI robot system that is governing us all. Door's got like a little bit of texture to it. Otherwise just really plain, kind of industrial style. Morning after the dudes put the door on. I think it looks pretty good. Only it really draws attention to the white door. Oh boy. Super different closed up in here.
All right, that's a little bit more matchy match. Now the containers are tied together. And I didn't want to like completely erase history by getting rid of all containerisms and pretend like they weren't shipping containers, you know, like pretty them up. Still a little tacky. And then I wanted to show you guys, I also popped my heater in here. It's hanging on the rustiest piece of steel I could possibly find. And there's no plumbing or anything. So it's still not actually heating, but the plan is to hook it into my water pipes and stuff. That's from the outdoor boiler. Man, it seriously echoes in here. And I've been doing this like five times a day. I think the paint tied it together pretty well. Liking the door. I don't know if you noticed, but the door is like ultra quiet. It's just like the old days, you'd hit the garage door and it'd be like this big roaring sound. This one just has like this very quiet vibe to it. And this heater is gonna be hooked up to the outdoor wood boiler we've got. You know, like that thing over there. Pretty simple deal. A stream and hot water comes in, hits a pump, goes into the heater. It's got like a million fins, big old radiator, and a fan, which I'll put on just like a thermostatic plug. So I ripped my crown molding, so to speak, and I've got an old piece of one by a barn wood. I'm gonna see if I can get some strips out of there, just because I still have my little trap door to kind of seal up and frame and trim and whatnot. All right, that's trap door for now. It still needs like insulation on the top and stuff. So next to the world's quietest garage door opener, I think I might have installed the world's loudest heater. It's got a fan back in there to kick the air through, but it feels good. I haven't really been running it because I haven't insulated the ceiling yet, but good news on that front. The insulation I ordered is finally being delivered like right now. And Melissa has signed up to run the hopper on the insulation install. That's gonna happen in a subsequent video, not right now. As always, it's worth saying, this is not really like a how-to video. It's not like a step-by-step -step progression of useful tips and tricks. Instead, it's just the story of how I did it. Appreciate you checking it out.